I just want to play devil's advocate for a minute here. Sure. Um, so don't you think, though, the sentiment about it's all who you know places too much um, emphasis on sort of ooh, climbing on the backs of others versus working on the craft? No, I think it's two separate things. Okay. I mean, I think that obviously your talent is everything. Your voice is everything. Um, your skills are everything. You know, you constantly have to be honing your skills, and that doesn't end until the day you die. So that, to me, is part of, you know, half of your job, in my opinion. Okay, in the old days, when, when I say the old days, I'm talking about five, six years ago, when we, uh, you know, were, if you were a screenwriter, you were a screenwriter. If you were a filmmaker, you were a filmmaker. You know, if you were a screenwriter, you tried to get representation, that person tried to get you a job, you know, get you assignments and you were a working writer. If you were a filmmaker, you bought your films to festivals, you hope somebody saw it, maybe it's a stepping stone to something else. But now, we have you know online distribution channels, we have people trying to take their matters into their own hands. We have screenwriters that want to be filmmakers, we have filmmakers that want to be producers, we have actors that want to be, you know, that want to be filmmakers as well. Everybody you know, is looking to control their own material, or a lot of people are trying to control their own material, which is not a bad thing. They don't want to relinquish it because they feel like it's too competitive or maybe they're not getting the response they want to get. If you want to do that, that's great, okay? But I feel that it, it does still behoove you to go out there and network and get to know people. Because even if you do take matters into your own hands and raise some money, go on to Kickstarter, raise $30,000, you're a screenwriter, you're making a short, now you're gonna, you're gonna film it. You know, now that you've done that, who are you showing it to? You know, where are you bringing it? So when I say it's not, you know, it's, it's as much of who you know, I don't mean that you gotta know Harvey Weinstein. You know what I mean? I don't mean that, you know, you, you got to get your film to Spielberg. What I'm saying is you got to get your, you have to have, first of all, it's great to have a support group. That's part of it as well. But then the second thing is, of course, you want somebody that's going to be able to move the rock on your career. Okay. And so you need to be networking. And, you know, sometimes when I say, you know, it's not who, it's, it's who you know, it could be that actor on your set who is so moved by the way that you directed this thing and he knows somebody and he wants to pass it along it's building this network of connections in the spider web that kind of grows out that you know where you can call in favors where you can maybe get somebody to bring your material to this person um you know it's, I'll, i use the screenwriting example again because i you know i operate a lot in that world a lot of managers will say there i have three stacks on my desk my clients people who recommend material to me and then the blind queries. And the blind queries probably never get read. I hear it all the time. They get, and they always get pushed to the bottom, okay? You wanna be, if you're not that first stack, you wanna be in that second stack. And how do you get into that second stack? Well, you gotta have people that are willing to go out on a limb for you. People that, you know, people that you've cultivated relationships with that are willing to take your material to this person or to that person or know this distributor or know this person that runs the film festival that is gonna say, yeah, you know, we could sneak you in. You know, and it happens all the time, by the way. And that's what I mean by, you know, it's who you know. Let's take a hypothetical networking event. Let's suppose you've connected with maybe seven people, you've received four business cards, you've followed back a bunch of people on Twitter while you're there. Yeah. What's appropriate follow-up without being, where they can tell you have an agenda because you're too, you've got something like, hey, I just want to let you know it was really nice meeting you. By the way, here's the link to my crowdfunding. Yeah, no, too much. <laughs> too much. And I mean, and crowdfunding, again, if we're going to just even take that example, again, it's all about cultivating relationships. You know, uh, we talked a little bit off camera, but, you know, you do get those people that say, hey, I got five hours left in my campaign. Please support me. And, and you go and you look at it and they're 98% away from their goal. And you go, well, you, you got to be kidding me. You know, everybody senses desperation. Everybody senses um, narcissism, you know, and it's, that's kind of easy to sense, but you, you get my point. Uh, everybody gets when a, a conversation was kind of fake, where it's like, hey, I really enjoy talking to you. And then five minutes later, it's, hey, look at my stuff. You know, it's an email or a tweet, hey, look at my stuff. It, you know, it's, again, it's all how you handle your stuff. I think the proper etiquette is, you know, great meeting you. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Or, you know, I enjoyed, if, this, if it's clear that you're not gonna be able to do for somebody, if you happen to meet 
like we said earlier, like Harvey Weinstein or Steven Spielberg. Um, you know, you're not going to go with them and say, what can I do for you? <laughs> but you're going to say, you know, good luck with the next thing. And if there's ever, you know, if it would, if it would ever be okay, you know, to maybe send you something along the way, you know, uh, would you consider that? If it was somebody of that, you know, stature. Somebody a little lesser, it just might be keeping that conversation alive. You know, checking back in with them in a few weeks and just saying, hey, you know, I have something that I think might be, you know, that I feel is close to your sensibilities because you did film X before. You know, make it relatable, you know, make it understandable um, to that person. And I think that you're not always going to get the response you want and you may not get a response at all, but I can guarantee you that if you don't take that approach, you won't get, you definitely won't get a response. You have a much better shot if you're, making that person feel human if you you got to understand that that person is getting a million of these you know what i mean they're getting they're getting hit up all the time especially if they met they just got done meeting 500 people at a festival and you're one of them okay so how do you stand out from those 500 well you have two chances you have one when you're face to face and then you have the second when you follow up so if you're you know, one of uh, 50 out of the 500 that didn't say hey by the way can you look at my stuff and, you know, then you're in that pool of 50 now, not in that pool of 500, and you can work your way down from there. So, so if you do collect a business card or you do follow someone on social media, right, you know, you're both on your phones, oh, what's your address? Okay, yeah, let me follow you right now. A slow, nice to meet you, you know, and depending on the level that they're at, take it from there. I think so. I think that, you know, again, what would you, what would you say to the person if you were face to face with them again? You know what I mean? Like, you know, it, as you're writing that email, as you're writing that tweet, you know, is this something that you would follow up if you ran into them again two days later in a coffee shop? You know, is this the conversation that you would have? Uh, I think you just have to take a real world approach to it. And I think you always have to be sensitive. Like I always say with anything in life, I always try to look at it at, from the other person's perspective. And I think it's a failing of humankind sometimes when it comes to communication and social media in general that we don't look at the other person's um, you know, a, a schedule, life in general, what they experience, you know, their experiences mainly. Um, but if I'm sitting there and I'm saying to myself, this person is getting hit up everywhere he or she goes, mm -hmm. I want to be sensitive to that. So I am going to present myself in a way that makes me feel like I'm sensitive to that.